So I bet you lots of you all struggle. Beginning carvers all struggle. This mic working? Man, this thing just drives me nuts. I got no idea what I want to carve today. No clue. I thought about it last night, processing it, processing it, processing it, and I don't want to do any more light things. Those lights are just too frustrating. So, I think I'm probably not the only person that um, has problems. This, what you want? What your next art project's going to be? So this is how I decide it. You know, I've carved a million wood spirits, this and that, and they're still not even that great. But the only way you're going to get better at anything, if you're not a naturally born artist, is repetitive, repeat, repeat, and do it over again. I'm going to carve a wood spirit today. I don't care. That's what I do. That's what I do. That's, that's my happy place. Then that's what I do when I don't know what I'm going to do. I carve a wood spirit. I carve them pretty quick now, but today I'm going to slow down a bit. And this is a chainsaw carving video, okay? But it also applies to the Dremel. And I'm going to like pretend that you're using the Dremel. I'm going to show how to get the nose to pop off a lot farther. Some people have been asking in our group Carving Fusion World of Wood Carvers. They're having problems with getting the nose to pop out. Well, I'm going to show how to get the nose to pop out in this video. And this is going to be a different type of wood spirit. If you're, same of the, if you're tired of the same repetitive, repetitive, repetitive stuff, I get it. I understand. But I'm going to make this wood spirit different. Why not? Who cares? If I never sell it, I'll give it away. It's a wood carving. It's special. Or I'll put it in the spirit trails. So let me get set up. We'll draw a wood spirit on. And wood spirits can be whatever you want them to be. They don't have to have a mustache. They don't have to have a beard. As long as you get that nose to identify it's a nose, I think you're off to a good start. So this is a first growth uh, western red cedar. What is it, like uh, thir 13 inches wide? What? Just over uh, five feet tall. Is that right? Yeah, five feet tall. And the thickness of it is, well, we got about, over here it's nine inches, but here we got um, six, six, seven inches. So I'm going to, I don't know. I don't really know what I'm going to carve. Is that All I know is that I'm going to have fun. That's basically the main thing. And this refers to the Dremel carvers or die grinders or Fordham carvers or any type of carver. This uh, video, there's a rock in there. That's not good for chainsaws. Um, you always, when you got a piece of wood, I know this is bone dry cedar. Like I said, it's first growth western red cedar. I see there's a big crack here. There's cracks all over this. But what am I going to say? I need a sip of coffee. That's what I need. Where's my coffee? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you got to find where all I'll do is draw on the nose and the face. And the, sorry, the nose and the eyes right now. And then we'll carve that out. Because once you get the nose established, there's so many different ways to do it. And this is just my opinion. And it's fast. Once you get the nose and the eyes to pop out, like the eyebrows to pop, then then it's an open ball field for you. Actually, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to slope back a forehead. Okay? So say from the piece here, forehead will be here. If I can zoom in. I don't know if that's going to, I want this to be a big silly face. I don't care. So let's cut on this line here. So pretend this is my chainsaw bar. I'm going to cut straight in and then I'm going to remove the wood, making it sloped like I'm um, sloped out. So it's sloped in like coming out like this because that's a good way to get your nose to pop off first. So I'll get that cut in sloped so you guys can see what i'm talking about on that matter um i don't think i need to film you guys can even see that okay see the forehead there now well, it's all going to be sloped back ah, here's a side view just carve rob and just carve rob knows how to do it already but so i'm going to cut on this line here push it in then cut the wood so it's sloped out this way i know i repeat but 
how else are you going to get it if I don't? How else am I going to know what I'm saying if I don't repeat? Because I forget what I was going to say two seconds ago. <laughs> okay, here's a better. Okay, so see how far I cut that back? And see how it's sloped out this way? So now where do you want to put your eyes? Um, we have this crack all the way here. So when I got, see cracks like this, I try and push my nose over to one side or another, but I'm not going to worry about it too much on this one. I want to give this guy a huge nose. So I know there's a crack right there. And I just really don't care, you know? So then your eyes, you can go like this, however you want. The bridge of your nose, don't put it, don't draw it on like this. Because when you carve it, it's harder to make wide than it is thinner. So draw it on wider at first. I'm just trying to make a fantasy one today. Just to show, try and give you guys some ideas that nothing needs to be the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my chair. I might try and film this. I'm sitting down in my chair. Lazy man has the best idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to carve on the outside of this line. So I'm going to carve here. Pretend this is my chainsaw bar. Carve here, here, right here, and underneath the nose, I think, is the deepest part of the face. So I'm going to carve deep right here, right from here on either side. It's how to get your nose to really stick off far. Carve deep here and underneath the nose. Sooner or later, I'll switch to the die grinder so you, so you guys can see what I mean. So, but let's just carve these lines straight like this. Remove some of this wood on the outside to get the nose to start to stick off and the eyebrows to stick up higher too. It's really hard to film uh, carving wood spirits with chainsaws. So, I hope you're going to be able to follow along. So, I'm going to get my, here's my chain. It might smoke a bit, but anyways. <laughs> Might as well do this like a real time video. So there you can see. Okay. So, but we still gotta come on tripod. I still gotta remove the wood below the nose. But if you look at a real person's face, like without the beard and the mustache, the lines always kind of come. Find a better pen. The lines always kind of come down here. So I think you're safe. To carve it on like a mustache like these lines down here I don't know this is so you'll see me cut here here and then remove the wood underneath the um, the nose that makes sense
guys are keep removing this wood here. that you're slowly re cut doing the cut here removing the wood with the dremel cut remove cut remove wood carvings removing right <laughs> Damn tripod. Gotta clean the oil there in my saw. So there you go. Okay, so I gotta fix this. God damn. Okay, so there you go. Now, see how far the nose sticks off here? Look at that. So now the, mo the more wood I remove here, the farther the nose is gonna stick off because you're not going to get this bulk of wood here. So I'll remove some of this wood off film. Actually, I don't need to. And another thing too, at this point, I look at the face and I think, well, what's, what's wrong with it? I can see that this comes out a little bit like this to the side. This one's straight up and down. So what I'm going to do is cut this one straight and make these two sides of the face match. Does that make sense to you? I can see that this eye is a bit lower than this eye. So hopefully you guys can follow along with that. So I can see that this side of the face is a bit thinner than this side, like the distance. So I'll slice this, some of this off right here to make it the same as this side, see? And what I want to do with this guy so his nose isn't so huge, 
I'm going to make it like a pointy kind of nose. You'll see I'm going to do that right now. So, and you always gotta, I gotta do it, get rid of this cut under here. I can see there's a chainsaw cut there. So cutting the nose, sloping it back. So I'm gonna draw a line right there. And I'm gonna go along, I'm gonna stand on this side with my chainsaw and I'm gonna up cut. And it, like, I'm gonna slope, I'm gonna slope it in. Let's see here. I'm gonna go like this. See that pen mark? That's exactly what I'm going to do. It's just called pushing it back, you know? So now look, these eyes aren't, there's the bridge of the nose. Remember I said start started off thicker. Now I can start refining all this. This side's a little bit big. I don't care. I can also make this nose not as thick at the bottom. I can cut it. I can cut it straight down here and make this guy kind of have a long pointy nose, like not as thick here. It's hard to explain, but all I would do is just do a straight cut here and here in. And then remove this wood and then just continue this down here. I, it's not making sense, I know. But so the eyebrows, okay? Let's push the eyebrows back. Because is the no in a human face, the nose really, this is totally uneven. Does the in the human face, the nose sticks farthest off the face. Now is the nose sticking farthest off? You have to ask yourself that. I think if I push these eyebrows. Like if I carve some more of these eyebrows put back, push, pushing back means carving deeper. If I carve these eyebrows deeper, then this nose will really stick off and you'll get a fun looking piece. So I might even like lose these scoops because I'm going to carve these so much farther back, two eyebrows. I might lose in here and have to carve the eye sockets in deeper again.
Okay, so you can see how far the nose sticks off. It's hard to see because you still got these side pieces on here. At this point, this dude has a really big nose, huge nose. So I think it's a little bit too big. What I'm going to do, like I said earlier, is I can make this nose thinner. And I can also make it shorter too. I can make this nose short. I can, I can bring it here. Even up here. Because all you do is you just carve this, take this away, and just extend these lines. Let's do that. I guess this is just going to be kind of like a wood spirit tutorial. But at this point, this is where you can do whatever you want to do with the piece. You know, you got your eye sockets. This isn't the best example. It's not going as well. I'm just kind of not paying attention like I should be. But um, anyways, let's make this nose a bit smaller. Cut. In, remove this wood, extend these. If there's a name for these lines, like when you smile, you get these lines on the face. I know some of you, Jordy's not that good of a carver, people think, oh yeah, I screwed this one up. Look how far that is under the nose. Like I said from the beginning of this video, I'm not trying to do a typical wood spirit. I'm trying to explore and learn new things. How can you learn new things by being repetitive? You do learn, like I said earlier, repetitive, 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 repetitive when you're trying to block out the nose and the eyes. The eyebrows like that, right? Just do the basic stuff. I have lots of tutorials on videos. But when you're trying to do new things, who cares? Cut deeper. Do you know what I mean? Cut deeper. So now I'm going to sit here, drink some coffee, and I'm going to decide what I want to do. I'm thinking that this thing, because we got such a nice lip here, and then the nose is right here, carving this out, give them a big lip. So it's a flower potter, right? I just don't care. As long as I'm here carving... I'm, I'm having fun. It's not a commission. It's what I want to do. Another good thing to keep doing for the very beginning carvers is look at the side of the face. Make sure this side is equal to this side, right? And also down here. Make sure this is equal to this. I know it's hard to see on camera because of shading, but does that make sense? What am I going to do here? Let's see if I can draw something on. So, well, I just don't know. <laughs> Sorry for the smoke. I could carve uh, this way deeper, push it back to the normal size, but that's it's about opening up your imagination, right? What should I do? Hmm. What should I do? You know, if you're very beginning uh, chainsaw carver, the first thing is safety. The second thing is having fun. Don't care. Don't care. Look, it's a happy guy. It's a succulent holder. Succulent holders are big sellers. Carve some quick trees on the bottom there. 
Do whatever you do want to do. Who cares what people think, right? Just do what you want to do. So up top here, let's see. Up top here, I'm going to carve a big flower petal. Yep, that's right. A big cheesy flower petal and then a stem and they're going to kind of, everything's going to branch in together. I won't film because this video is going to be too long. But I hope you guys understand how to make the nose stick farthest now. Let's see. See how far that nose sticks off? Oh, we go. Look how far that nose sticks off. Okay, so I wanted to carve a flower. So I carved a flower. You got to remember when you're making succulent plant holder seller things, most people that's going to buy them are ladies or the men for their wives or girlfriends or something like that. So also, I'll say right now in case I forget to say it later on, when you got a succulent holder and you want to sell it and post it on Facebook or whatever social media, it's best to show it when it has the flowers in it. Succulents can live through anything, right? So I still got lots to do and I want to show you guys. And I knew I was going to have this problem with all these. This is like, this has been floating in the ocean for years. So watch this. Watch this. Hold on. Where's watch? It all moves. See that? So I gotta clamp this and leave it overnight for and I'm gonna clamp it and I got some wood glue. To this is two types of gorilla glue here. One's just like normal wood glue, gorilla wood glue. It's white color. And the original gorilla glue is it foams up like uh, foam so you can see the darker color and this glue here the darker color one the gorilla glue will work with wet wood so I decided to use this wood for sure not the not the normal wood glue so but first of all I want to sand it when I sand it I'm just gonna have to be super careful because this whole piece right here oh, sorry everybody this whole piece wants to break off this flower so I got to be very careful sanding it because I'm going to paint this anyways. So I'm going to sand the whole thing quickly and I'll be back. Then we'll do some wood burning. I need to show you guys this. Okay. I need to repeat. So this is emery cloth. It's belt sandpaper. I think this is 46 grit or maybe this is 60 grit. But you just cut the strips. You get a ready rod. Right. So there's a ready rod. You got a locking nut and a washer there. And one in the back and you tighten up and this is also Daytona I seen that you had one good for you this is also old grinding thing like it's a handle off a grinder I just put this on here because it's got that sorry it's got this lip actually the lips wearing down thinner but the lip stops you from getting um, this sandpaper on your knuckles but when it's like that because well I've got lots of I'm missing lots of skin from my knuckles a couple weeks ago but they've healed up so anyways, so do you know what I mean? It's a grinding with this. It's good to uh, maybe, I don't know what I'm going to do. Anyways, I'm going to sound this.
So this glue, it's like foam, right? It's been like five minutes since I wiped it last. And you can see it just keeps coming out. So it's best to leave this overnight. I know they say it dries in an hour, but I'm going to leave it overnight. I'll come back tomorrow and paint it. So these trees here, they're kind of, you don't really see them. Let's get a full visual, visual of this. You don't really see the trees too well. So let's just uh, throw some paint. Uh, just give them a little bit of green. Because I'm going to be painting the flower. I'm thinking maybe uh, purple. Simple, just like that. Just give it a little bit of texture in there. <laughs> Look at that silly little piece. Okay, so it's still the same day. It's maybe uh, an hour later. Things change. They're calling the weather forecast to be super windy tomorrow, which I don't like these branches on this old cottonwood tree overhanging my tent. It could snap off when it's windy, come through the tent and kill me. So I don't want, I don't carve here when it's super windy. So that glue is kind of dry. It's, it's, it's not a hundred percent cured yet, but, um, I sanded it off. Okay. I got five minute epoxy. And I filled those holes with, uh, I mixed the epoxy with sawdust. Look, this stuff, that, glue, that Gorilla Glue, that's what it does to your fingers, and it will be there for a couple days. But anyways, I got uh, five-minute epoxy, mixed it with sawdust, filled the screw holes. I left the screws in. I don't even know where the other hole is. You can't even see it. Maybe it's right there. But uh, so, I got it taped off. I want to get this piece done. I don't know. I, I think I kind of want this to be a bright piece. So we got this, I don't know what color it is, uh, gloss, luster, something, 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 smooth, durable paint. I don't know, it's Krylon. We got this, and we got yellow. I wonder if those two colors go good together. I don't know. Let's paint it yellow, and then we'll paint the tips that kind of burgundy color, and we'll do the, the middle black. So you can see how this wood's just soaking in the paint. That's cedar for you. Look at that paint just suck in there. Okay, and let's get this. And then, uh, I don't know. Let's make it a bright, happy piece. Like I said, when it, when you're doing a planter, good chance it's going to be a lady that's going to buy it. So, but yep, this paint seems a lot better than that other stuff. Okay, where's black? I got black here somewhere. Let's do the middle black. Come on, give me enough black here. <laughs> Got our torch, we'll destroy this paint a little bit quicker. Did I say I cleaned the shop? Anyways, I cleaned the shop. But that mess. Anyways, let's get this tape off. Come on. I'm not trying to, I wasn't trying to create an art gallery piece, you know, I'm just doing something, having fun, doing what you want to do. And you know, another thing too, when you're doing what you want to do, that's when you learn the best. There you go. All right, I think it's not bad. So here it comes, everybody, sign your pieces. Doesn't matter if you're very first carver, a 10-year carver, or any type of artist, always try to sign your pieces. So let's give you a full thing of this. There you go. There's just a fun carving, you know, like um, too bad I didn't have succulents to put in the mouth there, but uh, I think this will sell no problem. I didn't carve it to sell it. 
I carved it because I wanted to just have fun carving today. That's what it's about, having fun. That's the bottom line. As long as you guys are having fun, kind of learning from my videos, because I'm learning at the same time, then it's working for everybody. So thanks again. It's going to be Carver Infusion, over and out. What do you think about that funny guy you just carved, Rob? Studio on the lake. You better hurry up start making some videos. There's your side view, Rob. Thanks for the support, everybody. Oh, another thing, too, I want to thank everybody that went over to the Drummel Maker Studio and uh, voted for me because I asked in the, a video. I won the um, <clears throat> Curve That Owl yesterday, that little owl. I won the Dremel Force, uh, what is it, 8460, like the one Ryan Cook has. So once I get that in the mail, I will be doing a review video on it. Oh, side your pieces.